Hey, what's up guys? Phil here with Transfer Superstars. I'm here at the PPAI convention and I found something that would pretty much interest you. We do have a lot of clients that submit our work to us. Uh, a lot of times they're school graphics or just images that they grab from the web. It's not vectorized, very low quality 72 DPI stuff. So we found something pretty interesting that, help, that might help you find a, res a solution to your problem. And that's from Graphics Power. I'm here with Matt. We're gonna go ahead and show you guys a demonstration on how we're gonna be able to turn a low quality graphic into a high resolution vector. Go ahead, Matt. Thank you. Uh, I will just show you a sh short interaction here on how to fix things and uh, turn them into perfect vector graphics. Sometimes you get graphics that are far from good. And uh, this is a, an example of a low resolution image, uh, a r really noisy. What do you get from taking a photo of a sign or something like that? So uh, first of all, I've loaded this image into the program and I can do that by screen capture or uh, just opening in a JPEG or a, a PNG or whatever. I need to tell the program which, prog uh, which colors are in the logo, but I can just click automatic here and it picks out gray, black, red and yellow. And uh, I will just remove the gray hair since it's the background of the image and then click vectorize. So, when you vectorize a low quality image, you usually get results like this. You don't want to have that in your prints. So what this program can do is we have developed a tool called Identify Font and Replace. And that's probably the only program in the world that has that tool because uh, it's very specific as, what to, as to what it does. So uh, I'm just clicking that and then I need to deselect the eye here because I don't want to uh, uh, remove that from the image. So now I need to tell the program uh, what kind of text is this. It's not a straight text so I will tell it this is written on a circular arc and the program automatically calculates the baseline for that text. If I want to I can adjust the baseline a little bit and that looks better I think and then I click next. Now I need to make sure that the letters are correct before I do the font identification. And uh, there are a few letters that need to be changed here. And that's the last one there. And then I click next again. And now it goes through 125,000 fonts that we have in our databases. And it comes up with a suggestion. Or you can see here that uh, I missed one of the letters here. Mm -hmm. So I just can go back and I will change that to an R and then click next again and it does the search again. And this is the best, best match the program found. But if you look closely here, it's not perfect at all. It's just close. And that could mean that either we, either we don't have that font or the second option is that the designer has stretched or compressed the text. In that case, you just click the try stretching option again and do a new search and our program will go through all the fonts again and try to stretch and compress and compare it and when it's ready you have the actual font and it's superimposed on top of the text that's in your in your image and you can see that it's perfect so all i have to do then is click the replace button and in a few seconds if i go click undo here you can see i have that poor text and now i got a perfect text and I can do that even if the text is distorted like it's in the Wildcats here. So I will just continue with the, the Wildcats text here. Select all of the letters. And uh, this is not uh, written on an arc. This is a distorted text. So I, when I select that option, I need to tell the program also which type of distortion I have here. And I think this one is the one that resembles most. I can adjust even here the distortion frame. And I will do that to make it easier for the program to find the, find the actual font. Click next, make sure that the letters are correct here. And it's usually harder for the program to identify the letters when you're working with distorted texts. Mm -hmm. So then you might need to type them all in here. And then you click next. And in a few seconds, the program will tell you what font it is. And you will be able to just clean it up really fast. So what I want to do here is I probably want to move the distortion frame a little bit just to make it match up perfectly. I will move this one down a little bit and uh, maybe 
down in the middle here also. Like that. I select the font that I own. You can see in the list here, the, the font identified is called Meta Black Roman. The third option here is uh, Meta Plus Black, and that's in green. And green means that I own the font, and all fonts that you own, you can immediately replace with. We also have included 6,000 fonts in the program that you immediately can, immediately can replace with, even if you don't own it. So, uh, and also that we have 25,000 fonts from a place called dafont.com, mm -hmm. and you can download them and just add them to the program, and then you can replace with them immediately also. And if you're an Adobe user, you can uh, activate fonts in Adobe Fonts, and they will automatically be added to the program so you can use those also. So you have lots of options to find the font you need and then just click replace here. So now you've got a perfect text even here. And finally, we have a text at the bottom, the racing team text here. And I will click, say that this is written on a circular arc also, even if it's on a bottom arc, the program will just calculate the baseline. And when I click next, I need to check the letters are correct again. And now it says it's a number six there. And I change that to G. And uh, I can clean this text up really fast also. You can see it made the perfect choice immediately. I click replace. Now all texts are perfect, perfect in the image. So what I need to fix now are the contour effects surrounding the white cats logo and the rest of the node editing here actually. And I can show you some really neat tools that will fix th things that you can't do in any other program. First of all, I will select the Wildcats text. And we have a tool called Replace Contour. I will use that to replace the white contour surrounding the, uh, the text. First of all, I just click Preview because the program automatically calculates the distance to the nearest contour. And I click Apply if I think it looks correct and it will take out the contour and replace it with a new one. The only thing here is it made the contour black. Mm -hmm. So I will just go to edit object here and click white. Now I got perfect contour mm -hmm. there. So that is actually calculated from the orig original font. So it's not, you can't get anything better than that actually. Mm -hmm. So now I will go over to node editing. It's in Graphic Tracer, it's called Adjust Shapes, and that will give you a node editing tool. And you click an object, you see all the control points on the paths. So what I can do is, for example, click this node over here, and then control click this node over here. That means it will select all the nodes going between those two. If I control click no the node again, it will go in the other direction. So now I have selected an, a row of nodes that should be a circular arc. And I can just click that option over to the left, convert nodes to a circular arc, and it becomes perfectly round. And if I do the same thing at the bottom here, uh, I select one node, and this one over here with a control click, I select, uh, go to convert nodes to arcs, it becomes perfectly round also. And the nice thing about this is it will align both those arcs with the same center point because it looks at all the arcs you have converted so far and they become per perfectly aligned. Now I can do the same thing here with, uh, if I zoom in here, I will select these three nodes, tell the program I want to convert those into a corner. If I zoom in, you can see when I point at the tool, you get a preview of what will happen before you click. So I will just click there and now I got a nice corner there. I will do the same thing here, convert into a corner. And uh, in the, this program, curves are red. If I double click on a curve, it will turn into a straight line. If I double click on the straight line, it will turn back to a curve. That should be a straight line. And now I can click this node here and turn it to, into arcs. And I use the shortcut key A here, just click select the nodes, click A, or tap A on the keyboard. Now I want to do uh, the other side here, I will just use a copy shape tool. Copy that selected shape, and everything I click will get that shape. If I press Shift, 
it will mirror that. Mm -hmm. So I, if I have mirrored shapes, I would just do that and now I get both sides perfect there also. So what I get left to do here is the inside here with the uh, cat in it. I will extend those two into a sharp corner. Then uh, go down here and do the same thing here. You, I used the shortcut key P to do, do that corner. Select all the nodes here in that circular arc. And that arc will also be aligned to those outside. So they will be perfectly parallel. And now I only need to clean up the cat here. And I can do that with uh, by control clicking as I often do in this program. I select one node, control click another one. And then I can tap C to turn that into a curve. Continue to the next one, tap C for a curve. So I can just move the no nodes between those and the program will actually use the raw data from the bitmap to make sure it follows the original. And you can always in Graphic Tracer press spacebar and you will see the original background image and you can see how close the editing or the lines or curves are following the original. So I think this looks pretty good. Here is an extra node. I probably just gonna delete that and uh, the eye might need to be fixed also and um, that should be a pointed corner there so in a few minutes um, if i'm not doing a presentation i can do this logo in five six minutes so i think this is ready and if you're working with screen printing you can go to color separation in, the, in this program and you will get color separated originals the, for each color here and you can export those as PDF, add uh, registration marks. You can do a choke and spread on each layer. You can add a white underbase. And uh, if you're not doing a uh, screen printing, you can export the file into EPS or AI, SVG, any vector file format. Or if you're working with Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw or any of these other software we have here, you can just select that one. I selected Corel Draw here. And uh, let's see, I'm going to exit this. Click Transfer. Uh, OK, I didn't have Corel Draw document open here. I will open one. Sorry, it's a little bit slow. Corel is a bit of, little bit slow here. Right? OK. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Let's do Illustrator instead. So right. I've got Adobe Illustrator here. Uh, I'm going to select that. I got the 2023 edition. I click Transfer. And the logo pops into that program immediately with one click. Very nice. Thank you. So there you have it, guys. A quick and easy solution to get your graphics vector. Whether you have a small graphic or a large graphic, this will help you out so that you can get the maximized and best quality graphic for your school, your logo, whatever you might need. So we're going to talk about we're going to talk with Matt about some specials here and how much this program costs for you guys to get going. Go ahead and share that, Matt. Yeah. So this is usually a subscription software, and uh, we have three plans actually. You can go monthly, fifteen dollars per month or yearly $120 per year. So that's $10 per month. Mm -hmm. But we also have a, an option to buy it outright and it's $595. And then all future upgrades are included so you never pay again. And, and as he was demonstrating for you, it is really quick to get this done. He could probably get the graphic done if he wasn't explaining about five or six minutes. So a great option for those that are not savvy with Illustrator or Photoshop or any of the other design tools. So again, thank you again for your time. You. I appreciate this. We'll drop a link below with all the descriptions on everything that we talked about. And again, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank I'll you. catch you guys on that next one.